How was it having the guys back today? Good. You know, it was good. You know, obviously with them having played, you know, most of them, uh, you know, went close to 90 minutes uh, or either played 90 minutes or were close to 90 minutes. Mario played the least. So it was important for them just to have a regen day today with their travel yesterday and all that. So it was good. They got the work in that they needed. So it was good. You anticipate they'll be ready to go on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. We think they'll all three be ready to go. So it's just a matter of how we intend to use them. Does it make your job any easier that really all three of them are being used kind of they, in different ways at the national team or does it make your job harder? No, I mean, you know, again, I think versatility is uh, is a good thing for players. And, uh, you know, you've got to, at the end of the day, you've got to be able to read the game, adjust to the game, and and uh, play in a manner that allows you to be successful within the game. And, uh, you know, by playing different positions, that helps you uh, appreciate that fact. And it shows that you can help out the team in different ways. So, you know, when you have, like in Eddie's case, when you have Eddie Oba and Nagel, you know, have a Nagel who can play wide, you know, Oba's been out wide before in his life as well you know and Eddie is shown that he can play there so now you got guys who can be a little more uh, uh, unpredictable in their movement off of each other. Is your understanding that these guys won't be involved in at least the early parts of the Gold Cup or has any more clarity come on on that? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the national team coaches are going to announce that. We've had our discussion, so I have a good idea what the plan is, you know, for the, for them right now. So, uh, you know, so if things stay according to plan, sometimes things change. So you never know. So I can't, you know, I can't really say that's, you know, that's for Jurgen and, and for the coach of the Honduran team to say. Salt Lake's been hot as well lately. What, what have you seen from that team? Kind of what, what do you guys need to be aware of? Well, you know, they've got a lot of belief in themselves. You know, they're always a team who likes to knock the ball around. You know, uh, Finley back, uh, Olmos Garcia has come on and played well for them. He's given them good pace off the bench. Uh, you know, Sandoval's, uh, you know, obviously gotten a better hang of the league now. He's, you know, you know, you know, 15 games in, so he's no longer just a rookie. He's played a lot of minutes. So uh, I think, uh, you know, they're a team that, you know, believes in what they're doing and their attacking abilities, has some pace up front. Uh, you know, has gotten a couple of good results, so they're very confident. And Morales, so what, what has he added now that he's kind of back in full swing with that group? Well, Javier's, uh, you know, I mean, he's he's a playmaker, and and they cut, you know, their games cut to him when he's not on the field for them. They're not as dangerous or as effective. That diamond formation needs somebody to spearhead that diamond, and he spearheads that diamond for them. So when he's on, he's just a, he's just a good decision maker. That's what makes him a dangerous player. He's a player that if he has the ball often enough, uh, he's going to make more right decisions than wrong ones. And uh, you know, if he gets the ball a lot, then he's going to have a chance to hurt your team. Do you feel like Evans has a potentially higher ceiling as a right back in terms of what he can, can like where he can play and in the world and international stage? I don't know what you mean by higher ceiling necessarily, but it's uh, uh, you know <laughs> got to say this the right way because I mean every position on the field is a difficult position, but uh, you know certainly sometimes playing wide there's difficulties in it because you got to you got to have pace and you got to beat people and so forth but there's also a little more comfort in it because you know nobody's going to blindside you uh, you got a sideline there to help protect you uh, so it makes the game a little bit easier to a certain extent as well uh, you know so for him obviously his potential in the national team probably as a central midfielder is not as great as it is as a right back or even possibly as a wide right midfielder. So, uh, you know, but that's that's fine too. There's a lot of guys who've played one position for their national team and a different position for their club team. And uh, for us, sometimes, you know, it's been a situation we've played them wide this year as well, and uh, we've played them inside. And uh, a lot of that is because, you know, we've had to use them in, in those positions. But, uh, you know, so his ceiling, yeah, is probably higher as a right back because obviously with the national team, that's where he's playing. Where did, what did you think of his play as a right back? I thought it was okay. You know, there's still things he has to learn, you know, because uh, it's a, a newer position for him. And it's uh, defensively, you know, obviously you're going to get against some guys who are pretty quick, you know, are pretty good with the ball. So you got to keep your feet moving defensively. Uh, you can't get caught, uh, you know, flat footed or jumping in because then with their quickness, they'll beat you. And I thought. Uh, as the games went on, I thought that's one thing that he really got better with, you know, that when he was in one on one defensive positions, uh, he was more active with his feet and he was quicker. And uh, and uh, as a result, I thought he defended better. Thanks, Scott. In, in the Vancouver game, I think got his 263rd appearance as a sounder when you include the lower leagues. 
And Frank McDonald, who I'll call a Sounders historian, says that's most of any Sounder. He broke a tie, I guess, in that Vancouver game. Do you think that's something that should resonate with the, the fans and community? Zach Scott getting most appearances Sounder at any level? I think so. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> I think uh, you know. I think that's a pretty interesting stat, and uh, certainly I think that's something that uh, you know we as a club have to look at how we want to treat something like that. You know, do you go back to the old? Uh, you know, I'm sure Frank has gone to the old NASL Sounder days as well, and whether the USL Sounders uh, appearances should be added to the top flight appearances. You know, so. Uh, but it's certainly a very interesting stat. It shows that he's been a great servant of this club, and uh, and he's you know he's had a great career in Seattle for sure. He's had a pretty healthy back line, and he's still been able to get time. What has he been doing in the past month or so to get on the field? Just uh, he's just been consistent. You know, when somebody faltered a little bit, he was there to step in and play. And he came off the bench, played, played well. You know, and by playing well, earned himself another opportunity to play. So. Consistency of training is uh, is something that Zach always brings to you, and uh, and that's something that you look for. So, you got to have competition. And even though we've been somewhat healthy, you know there have been opportunities that have presented uh, themselves at times. You know Jimmy's, you know had to miss an occasional practice here and there, and you know that's an opportunity maybe to step in and play that role. And and when you get that chance, you do well with it, then hopefully opportunities come. Do you feel any better going into this game against RSL than maybe you felt the last time you guys played them? Yeah, I think obviously we're as a team, I think we're in a better place. You know, I mean, uh, last time was Oba's first game. I mean, the team knows Oba right now. Nagel wasn't even a part of the equation, you know, the last time we played. Uh, I know for Eddie uh, Johnson, the game last time came at a point where, you know, his hamstring was a little bit tender. Uh, so there were a lot of things, you know, affecting us as we went into that last game. But, uh, you know, Leo Gonzalez wasn't in there as well, you know, so it's. It's something that we feel better about, but I'm sure they feel better about it too at this stage.